I am so excited to show you this new software in today's tutorial. But at the same time, I'm so, so disappointed in this one singular fatal flaw that it has. It's really depressing. Oh, it's so close to being really freaking cool. But this one thing basically makes it useless in my eyes. This video is brought to you by me and the new YouTube Hard Truths podcast that I have recently launched. Want to make an epic YouTube channel or find your way to a full-time content creator career? It's not all sunshine and rainbows and I have the hard truths and advice that a lot of people won't tell you, but a lot of mindset things that you really need to hear. Check it out via the links in the video description. Eples Fox here to make tech easier and more fun, and this is the Logitech Logi Capture app, uh, available in beta, that as far as I can tell, they're not really telling anyone about, and I would understand why at this point. I actually found this because I was looking for Logitech Brio drivers for my Brio webcam, which I'm using for this testing. I was having some issues with the drivers just not installing at all on my gaming machine and throwing a huge fit, so I was trying to see if they had a manual downloader, and I discovered this was released as of October 24th, 2018. It appears to be a new webcam capture app utility because the old Logitech webcam software has long since gone. It was never all that great, but at least worked. They haven't really come up with a replacement. And this is a, this actually seems like a really cool one because it does screen capture as well. So in theory, this would be a really cool tool for tutorial makers and for people who do you know, a, a variety of different just basic capture stuff. And I was really excited for it. And I'm going to show you the exciting parts before we get to the bad news because I'm not sure anyone can use it as is. So I'm actually going to go ahead and, well, you, you, can, you can get the idea here. So you install the software and then you launch it. And assuming you have a Logitech camera enabled, then Source 1 will default to that camera. You can see here. Logitech cameras isn't detecting anything else at the moment and then screen capture are your options for sources and you have two sources you can choose between so source one for me is my Logitech Brio uh, and this integrates I have made a previous tutorial on the Logitech G hub which I do not have installed here uh, but it is a software that allows you to better manage your Logitech gaming uh, peripherals and includes webcams and you can create uh, presets and more finely control your webcam settings and set that to automatically apply every time you start up your computer which was a major issue with recent Windows 10 iterations as the webcams would just reset their settings every time you rebooted it was really weird this integrates those settings so you add your webcam and then you can choose between a streaming preset a video calling preset or you can set up custom presets and use that so that's what I've done here you have the option to set up a colored border uh, which is Admittedly more useful for the screen capture stuff, which I'll show you in a minute. But you can set up a different colored border, and then you can adjust the thickness of the border to do some ridiculous stuff. We're going to go 1, 1 and a half, 2 is probably the best, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and turn that back off. You have the option for a border. You can change the priority, uh, whether the webcam prioritizes a smooth frame rate or correct exposure. As this was a long-running problem with Logitech webcams, is they would prioritize exposure and frame rate would go to all hell. I definitely recommend, in most cases, setting that priority to frame rate. Then you have field of view options, depending on the webcam that you have. And honestly, these are just crop factors. Like, it doesn't actually change anything about the webcam as far as I'm concerned. It just crops in on the sensor. You can see my little kitty in the back behind me. So I'm just cropping in so you don't see my messy living room. And then you have the option for HDR, which is just some... AI software stuff they have running that aims to better adjust to lighting. My hair is a disaster today. Down here you have pan, tilt, and zoom options. So, uh, <laughs> here's the stupid part about the field of view thing. I'm cropped in with the field of view, but I can't adjust pan or tilt. So, if I go to 90 degrees and then zoom in, somehow this is slower. Like you saw, it got glitchy and it's like more intense and it's just like more resource intensive. So I guess there's some like software preset. This almost looks cleaner than the 65 degree option though. This is cropped in via the zoom tool instead of the field of view one. And this looks like a cleaner feed. 
I'm guessing there's some sort of software option in the webcam to have like those preset crop factor modes. But this actually looks a little bit better. But then you have like pan and tilt and zoom. But like I said, it gets a little weird compared to uh, the normal field of view options. Then you have anti flicker for the lights you have going on in the background. Most of my stuff operates on 60 hertz variants, so that's fine for me. If I turn it off, you might see a little bit of flickering happen. Press set it on the wrong thing. You can play with that depending on your lighting. Now, then you can control autofocus or manual focus. Autofocus generally is doing a decent job these days, uh, but sometimes it still focuses on the mic, not me. And so you can drag this to decide where your focus plane is supposed to be. I'd say right there is pretty sharp for me now, but then if I start moving, that will move. And so autofocus is usually pretty handy on webcams. The problem is, <laughs> is I don't know if you saw there, but their plane of focus is from right on top of the lens, basically out to here. And then out here is infinity. Like there, you, you can't get any good depth of field because it's all like right on top of the webcam. Then you have auto white balance. Again, by default, this is actually doing a pretty decent job. I have a big uh, studio light flex light up here. It's set to 5,500 Kelvin. Uh, it's a little red or orangish here. But the problem is, again, their, their manual controls are not amazing because it's literally just like adding a blue or red filter to the feed. Like, this is not normal white balance control. I mean, I guess I could sort of get it dialed in here, but auto... I don't know. Auto just manages the color better somehow than what you can do manually. And then you have brightness, sharpness, uh, saturation, and contrast control. So you can turn up or down the saturation depending on how you want. For whatever reason, 100% is actually pretty desaturated looking. I think 123-ish is what I landed on for just kind of a basic look for now. You can do some more advanced stuff. You can set up chroma keying <laughs> above your screen if you have a key that you wish to remove here. Now my shirt's cut out. And then if I go over top of my desktop here, you can see it's starting to cut me out. A little silly there. And then you have advanced options, which is literally just to mirror the video. Not sure why. I mean, I guess they plan on adding more later, but it seems ridiculous to have that under a toggle. Okay, so these are all the controls for your webcam source. That was a lot of information. Now, if you just want to start recording or whatever, you have volume controls for your microphone, which you will want to adjust separately in a minute. You can actually mute your microphone or your desktop sound. You can take a picture. For my Logitech Brio, they come out as uh, 3200 by 1800, but they're only about 150 to 200 kilobytes. And so it ends up being super compressed and blocky. Uh, I, I'm not sure why. Like, I'm pretty sure the Windows 10 camera app takes sharper pictures than that. And then they are stored in your pictures folder, Logitech, Logi Capture. Same thing with videos, videos folder, Logitech, Logi Capture. We'll touch on that in a minute. But you have the option to manage multiple sources. So for source two, I have set up my primary monitor display as if I was recording tutorials. Now, if I take a screenshot of that, again, same folder, but it's still 3200 by 1800, not my monitor's resolution and still super compressed. Really bizarre. For a display source, you have the options of a border which does not, since my monitor is wider than 16 by 9, it doesn't actually let me put the border up in the letterbox in here. It just puts it over the video feed. Again, chroma keying or under advanced option, mirroring again. Where it gets fancy is down here at the bottom, you basically have a little video mixer as if it's kind of working like an OBS competitor. You have source 1, source 2, overlay source 2 over top of source 1 for picture in picture, and then source 1 over top source 2 for picture in picture. And you do have control to move these sources around and resize you can go up to it looks like that would be considered 50 percent of the frame all the way down to super tiny and unusable i i have not found any way to crop it uh, let me hold alt oh hey holding alt actually lets you crop there we go okay so there we have a nice little square face cam if i was doing a tutorial and that does let me put it over top of the letter boxing but then i can't actually move source 2 down or anything like that really weird and then you can switch between them and then under this setting, which is transitions, you can choose the transition. So you have wave, which is what I've been using, move, which I'm believing is a slide. You have clock wipe and then fade. Let me test move here. Yeah, it's just like a really bad generic slide. And then you can change the duration of the transition. Over here in the audio settings, you have your audio input and output. 
This is single track, everything mixed together, and you only have choice for one microphone and one desktop audio device. Over in the video setting, you can set up some video options. For example, resolution. You can go from 4K if you have a webcam and or screen that supports it. You can even do 4K vertically for whatever reason. No, please. All the way down to 360p. Now at 4K, I believe this is a limitation of the webcam that I have. It only lets me do 30 FPS. If I do 1080p, it lets me do 60 FPS and it does actually work. I did test the smoothness is there. You can change the video encoder, which I believe will support Quick Sync. Uh, however, I do not have Quick Sync supported on my system, so it's just InVink. And then you can choose the location that things go. And then you have a couple advanced options. A 3 2 1 countdown, basically, that pops up whenever you are uh, starting the recording, so you know when it's about to start. Whether there's a Logitech overlay on top, I don't know why you'd want that, but you do have the option hidden to turn it off. And then 5 megapixel enhanced screenshots. This has not made a difference for me in the quality. I'm guessing, I'm guessing this just isn't working yet. The resolution, oh, that did actually drop the resolution down to 1080p. Previously it wasn't. So that seems to be based on whether you're running at 4K or not. If you're running at 4K, even with that unchecked, it still does these 3200 by 1800. But at 1080p, it looks like, or lower, I guess, it will do 1080p. And then if you have the 5 megapixel enhanced thing, it will do the 3200 by 1800 screenshot. Okay, good to know. <laughs> Again, they're really crappy quality. Over here under the Alt, you actually have keyboard shortcuts for literally everything. Well, mostly everything. Pretty cool. Under this, you can set up your settings profile. So we're going to create a new profile. That, that's fine. New profile. Webcam totally had a hard time there. And that just reset all of my settings. Holy cow. It it. Did, did it not let me save the profile? I don't understand. Huh. Okay, then. I see how you're going to be. And then there's an auto-update date, auto update option under the three dots menu. Overall, it seems great. It seems like a fantastic tool and something I was really excited to share. The big problem is the final quality of the recordings. I, I did some tests at 4K and at 1080p. At 1080p, 60 frames per second. It is clearly a variable frame rate file because Windows says the frame rate is 64.28 frames per second. If I check it out in media info here, media info reads it as a lock 60. So maybe Windows is just interpreting their, the codec weird. Actually, that's really interesting. Huh. Okay. So I was originally basing a lot of this information off of the Windows Explorer thing because usually that's fairly accurate. And it says it's 429 kilobits per second and a variable frame rate. And for 4K, 30 FPS, still variable frame rate, and 2 megabits per second. However, for the 1080p, media info is saying it's 17.6 megabits per second, which would be a fairly competent usable frame rate. And the 4K one is 28.8 megabits per second. However, however, if you play this back, this is a test of the Logitech Capture app at 4K 30 frames per second. Okay. That's not as bad as I thought. If we look at the 1080p here, this is a 1080p. The 1080p is pretty compressed. It's not sharp at all. There's some jaggies and things like that. The 4K one actually ends up looking all right. So I, it wasn't quite as bad as I originally thought. But the audio, the audio is horrendous. I'm just going to let this play out. This is a test of the Logitech Capture app at 4K 30 frames per second. I'm mainly just trying to see if the bitrate is any better because it sounds like I'm talking through a microphone on a cell phone video camera from like 2002. Oh my god. Actually, I'm going to pull media info back up here. Audio stream, yeah, 96 kilobits per second. And you have no control over bit rates here. That is absurd and not really acceptable. What does this one say for 1080p? Yeah, also 96 kilobits per second. So that's the big limiting factor of all of this really cool tool on top of the fact that you don't like it clearly doesn't like non 16 by 9 displays. But, you know, you, you it, it made it look like I could adjust the size there. Like you, you could make some decent tutorials and stuff with this, but the audio quality is just terrible and the lack of control over it despite having hardware acceleration in mind the lack of control over it and the poor audio quality are very much 
editing e-post coming in here about over a week later as I was about to post this video, I inadvertently discovered a very important feature that left out of this video. This acts as a virtual camera output as well, which means you can loop this into OBS Studio or video chatting apps or video conferencing apps like Skype, Zoom, things like that. It basically acts like a webcam. So any filter or changes you apply to your webcam in this app, you can send that over to OBS and in my testing, it was real time. Like there was no latency whatsoever, which is really impressive on top of the fact that you can loop in screen capture and picture in picture things like that, as I showed off earlier in the video, if you are doing video conferencing or something like that. So this part is incredibly impressive. Negative contributing factors here, but it's a really cool tool. And if you want to check it out for yourself, I will post links to it as I can. Keep in mind, it may be webcam specific. In the description down below, this is very work in progress, very beta. Just wanted to get my uh, opinions and feedback out there. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech education. Go check out that Logitech G Hub video if you're interested in locking in your webcam settings at boot. And I'll see you next time.